Well, hey there, and welcome to the Homer Hangout. It is CPI week this week. Hope you're doing well. Hope your week has been good. And always, if you want to chat with us throughout the week, come on over to the Discord, post your questions in there, and we can help you out with all manner of things. If you've got problems with your submissions or anything like that, come in and chat to us throughout the week. I'm posting up some interesting games that I find. Not as many as I used to, I have to, I have to say. Uh, but the best cream of the crop are in the new games section there throughout the week on the Discord. So we return with the CPI show, your favourite show, I have to say. And without further ado, I'm just going to bring on the man himself. Olek, how are you doing today? Hey, guys. Very happy to be back. Missed you a couple of times because of this couple of weeks, because of the summer. But we are back with the new content. So get ready your questions. Yeah, get your questions in today. Uh, we've got a presentation for you. Uh, interesting topic this one. Good to see everybody in the chat. What is up, Chris? What is up, Jilly? What is up, you do? How are you all doing? I know people are on their holidays, as Alex said, which we wish we were, to be honest, but we're not. We are here for you. So we're going to jump straight into it today. Um, get your questions in. We'll get to them towards the end. We left a lot of time for Q&A this week. Uh, but let's just dive in to the subject. And this week, we are going to be talking about the power of the audience, the assets, and reskins. So what does all of this mean? Um, and I think it's a relatively straightforward situation, but let's just frame it with a couple of bits of information to get us going today. So you are now seeing the top games uh, by monthly active users, uh, likely to be played in a split between male and female. Uh, this is from App Annie. App Annie, data.ai, <laughs> I should say. And uh, yeah, we can see here uh, the biggest games. Uh, the data set is taking the top 20 apps by monthly active users uh, throughout the year, uh, last year. And you, obviously the big games you can see there. But it's really interesting to figure out exactly the split of the audiences and how that relates to today's topic in terms of your art style and matching it up with your genre and your genre and art style, but audience is a better way of putting it. So at the top, we've got for the males, Pokemon Go, um, which is kind of interesting, I would say. Uh, Subway Surfers, Among Us, Clash Royale, and Call of Duty. No real surprise there with Call of Duty. Um, but as we can see, sports, strategy, and shooting, as you may expect, skew more towards a male audience, and Match Free and Puzzle more towards the female. And if you look at the icons here, I think it's really telling in terms of the female, especially of the palette that's being used and the art style chosen that are performing the best. So I hope that is all making sense there. Uh, male and female split, um, shooting strategy in sports for male, and match free and puzzle for female. Now, these are the same uh, data set, but by age group. So, 18 to 24, 25 to 30, 35, 44, 45 plus. You'll see uh, some overlap there, and of course, because of these are taken from the big games. But I think this one's worth referring back to because you can see there's, again, the art style is kind of telling uh, when it comes to the age range. And of course, you'll be thinking, well, the more the cartoony type stuff is geared towards the younger group, um, but it also goes hand in hand with the genre. And that's why these two slides, I wanted to start with this today, just to put some context into it, um, because it it's very much a match you're trying to make rather than one definitive every single time. All right, I'm going to keep the comments on here so I can see. I don't want to miss too much. Um, okay. So that's essentially the sort of framework here. We're looking at the, the biggest games, whether they're skew male or female, and the art style associated with those games. Um, and I think it's good to see the icons here because it should be a good representation 
of what the games are doing. So matching art style with genre and audience. That's what we're going to be talking today about. And of course, we have Oleg popping on in just a sec. But before we do that, let's just set it up for him and see how this refers to CPI. Because this is the CPI show. So quoted from Philip Kotler in 93, one of the uh, world-renowned marketing gurus out there. Um, According to, to traditional marketing literature, a good product is one that satisfies customer needs, preferences, and expectations. And I really want you to concentrate on the expectations here because I think that's most pertinent to the conversation we're having today is does your product match the expectations of the player in our case of when they are downloading and playing your game? Does the art style match the type of game that they are wanting to play? So we want to make sure we are aligning our art style with the experience that is intended for the player. So who is your target audience? How do you know who is your target audience? There's various ways you can get data on that, but essentially you should have a pretty good idea of who that is. Who is the persona of the player that you are trying to attract? Essentially, who do you think would play your game? So if we were talking FPS, because we've been doing a ton of that on the channel this last few weeks, we will know that it's potentially most likely males are between 18 and 45 in the western part of the world right so we know we're looking for males of that sort of age group the genre in this case is fps so what are they looking for when they go to play an fps and you see here that it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek the graphics i've put on here but we've got agent hunt uh, that we covered a couple of weeks ago. Um, very much the sort of Keanu Reeves slash John Wick style. And you've got a really good understanding of what you'd expect when you'd open that game. Whereas it's a very different feel, tone and vibe with the one on the left. It's a totally different expectation of what that game is just by your art style and your graphic choices. Um the most important thing here is to ensure you're not going outside of your scope. So know your limitations here for balancing the quality of what you're trying to produce, the time it's going to take, the capacity of your team, or if you're more solo then you know, realistic expectations on your own skill sets. And of course, the budget if you're outsourcing anything. So... Um, if you're trying to make Grand Theft Auto, you're probably going to find out that you're going to run out of money and uh, skills pretty fast. So it's all about scope, this one. But um, it doesn't necessarily mean you should not aspire to head towards the more realistic, if that's where you're going. Um, but just keep that in mind as we talk through this today. So... I thought this was a great tie-in with the art style matrix for 2023 that myself and George did. It's on the channel. A link should be below or you can find it within the live section of the Homer Academy YouTube channel or indeed, of course, inside the Homer Academy where you'll find the presentation to download and stuff like that. But this is the matrix where you'll get a good balance of what's typically expected uh, when we look in at these types of art styles that you're heading towards. And I think this is a really great one here. So um, you can see here, we've got five. We've got the cartoon, we've got the low fidelity, the high fidelity, ultra realism, and photo realism. So not so much photo realism these, uh, these days on mobile yet. Uh, we're yet to catch up for performance and stuff. But you can see here that the simulation type games are sort of more low fidelity slash reels that cartoon realism think uh think of all the big simulation games out there and as we go into the more shooters we're going for more high fidelity realistic graphics which matches the sort of experience they're trying to make like being a uh, uh, 
soldier or something along those lines. So you can go and watch that one to get some real clarity on that. Um, but I just wanted to set set it up, and now Oleg's going to swing it right the way back to the CPI show for us to show us just how important that your art style needs to be. So keep your questions coming in. I'm going to move it over to Oleg now, and he's going to save the day or save the CPI show for us. Hey, hey guys, if Kevin, you can keep this slide for now on, I'm going to make a short intro. So the topic of this presentation actually came uh, recently when we launched two similar games. People would say similar games, uh, Attack Hall and uh, Hall and Field. And actually, why did we manage to do so is because these two games target two completely different audiences. As um, the very first one, Attack Hall, is actually the game about uh, the whole eating bullets and then shooting it at the boss. Uh, and um, we tried it in various art styles, the, the bullets may, may, meaning making them more cartoonish like in the game, making them more realistic and various iteration of type of bullets. And they always attracted the male audience uh, <clears throat> between 18 and, uh, and 30 years old. So young men audience, uh, very, very low CPI, but, uh, but uh, only for this type of audience. And then actually one of the examples of how we used it uh, is to use another game making another game called Holland Teal, which is uh, about, which has completely different progression. You have to try the level um, the same uh, many, many times before you actually can complete it. But uh, the, um, the videos itself might look similar to somebody, but uh, actually they target female audience. So they are fully about, um, about eating the, the fruits and objects that you can feel in the fridge at the level end. So completely, Two, two similar games, two exactly the same mechanics, but uh, two different in-game progressions and two different uh, um, two different videos and, com and consequently two different games published. So you guys can actually use it for that or as we're going to show you later, use it to actually decrease CPI in your game by knowing what type of audience you want to target. So if you move to the next slide, yeah. It's one of the games uh, here on your example, you see a military type of game where you control your rocket at the, at the first stage of, of a gameplay, uh, trying to, to hit the, the enemy target. Then there is second stage of gameplay, but we actually we are uh, not showing it. And on the left side is a completely cartoonish art style. Uh, it's uh, probably something that you guys are used to, something that most, most of the games are using uh, inside so a bit uh, pixelated but still very cartoonish simple colors and uh, on the right side which we used uh, in a different test so same gameplay test between one or two days uh, is actually more realistic art style uh, and the cpi is actually twice lower with the um, with the same time of gameplay. So actually we did it to also get a grasp of what exactly we want to use in the game. So cartoonish assets would probably make us a bit less performance dependent and also easier to create. And the realistic assets are a bit more difficult to create, but actually, as we see here, they are much more marketable. So in the end, we also chose to use the same exact uh, uh, assets in the gameplay as we do on videos. And uh, if we switch to the next side, you can see that uh, the first video is actually attracting both male and female. So with uh, not that big um, disproportion, so uh, with almost equally balanced, 50, 58, 42. And, with, uh, um, and for, for this type of game, honestly, we don't expect that to be, uh, to be played by females. Yes, we, we can extend the reach to females on the later stage of iterations. So on the launch stage, when we actually want to, to, to reach more audience, as we say, normally have a casual. But currently, what it shows is actually females, they will drop off the game quicker, unless, I mean, there is a specific percentage also, which is called uh, outliers. But usually females for this type of game, which is always around uh, uh, conquering new, new territories, killing enemies. And then, I mean, the plan would be to, to capitalize on that with the reason and up purchases. So everything related to military thematic and everything related to making you um, to make you complete the, the game faster and kill more enemies. So we wouldn't expect females to largely be engaged with this type of game. 
So it's the same uh, question is, would you want to target them on your ads? And uh, when in hyper casual, we used to say that you have to to make the game specific for the biggest amount of audience possible when everything was around marketability and you had the very low potential for high LTV. And then uh, at this stage, your marketability matters a lot, a lot, a lot, because uh, the variation of plus minus plus five cents CPI would actually decide whether your game is profitable or not when we speak only about LTV, adult TV. Here, when we are speaking a bit more on uh, hybrid casual or games just with high LTV potential, with potential LTV uplifts for in-app purchases, it's not the question anymore. Right now, the question is everything about engagement. And so when you target 42% uh, of female audience with your gameplay videos, you could uh, expect lower engagement from these 40, 42%. But if we do a realistic art style, like you can see on the next slide, it's actually way more to what we would expect from this type of game. So not only lower CPI on uh, on uh, on the marketability, but actually these are the, the type of people who would be largely engaged with your uh, with your gameplay and that would probably want to buy in a purchases in the game if it's interesting enough. I mean, many conditions, but it's actually the the audience that you want to target and the the um, the audience that we want to to uh, to keep in the game to make them uh, to make the game interesting for them because we, that's who we expect will buy the net purchase and consequently the men represents uh, 91 92 percent of this uh, of these people and here it's uh, women is around nine percent so moving forward I think yeah, this is one of uh, the most recent examples of the games we published. And I think uh, one of the most impressive ones is actually Dozer Demolish. And if we see on the left side is uh, cartoonish, um, cartoonish art style is the same we use in the game. Here we didn't change the whole gameplay to realistic art style. And this is interesting because uh, um, uh, because uh, usually, I mean, we want the people to play exactly the same what they see us, but for this game, it was too difficult to remake all the art style uh, and uh, put everything in realistic. Uh, so we kept cartoonish art style, as you see, around the same we did on the left side. Of course, we improved it through iterations, through, through many iterations, but we didn't change it fully. And though we used it on ads, and we on the here is a low scale tests uh, uh, example, so to two hundred fifty dollars uh, on Facebook. But actually, the CPI was so drastically lower that we uh, that let us move very very fast on the game. So I would say the here we we further found uh, many new ads that let us uh, launch the game and keep it profitable. But at this stage of testing is actually this type of CPI, which was 17 cents, uh, made us move on the game super, super fast and uh, invest into iterating more and more and finding more and more concepts. So it's an ex it's the type of thinking was exactly the same is like those are demolish uh, game about demolition, destroying the buildings. Uh, we know past examples, uh, the games we launched about destruction, we know examples of Voodoo who launched uh, uh, Demolish, their game, uh, which was um, which was quite successful and also had very low CPI in the tests, was fully targeting main audience. And uh, main audience is uh, is very skewed to destruction explosions. And this, this is what we used here on this game as well. And... Um, and uh, we see that even on the first stage uh, we were widely like the audience that downloaded the game was widely represented by men so it's not a problem of uh, targeting it's directly clear that uh, that the gameplay is going to be attractive to men that everything uh, that what we're going to build the game on is going to be around your machines about making them visually more powerful stronger and uh, the feeling of distraction uh, have to be perfect. So fully targeting male audience, but the art style and what we saw with Josh is actually um, blends well with the realistic one. So our line of thinking was, okay, we already have a creative that attracts largely male audience. We have the gameplay, which perfectly works with the realistic art style. 
uh, so realistic buildings, uh, realistic dozers, uh, and we also know that uh, realistic art style works well from uh, from our previous tests. So the logical, the most logical way to do was was to try to quickly reskin the game and just try on videos. That's what we did, and the results. Uh, let's see, but they were super super uh, positive like 17 cent cpi again with uh, keeping exactly the same audience so no risks for for gameplay no risk that your game is going to be um, dropped off quicker because uh, the gameplay is not exactly the the same as you see on ads because actually the audience that uh, downloaded the game was exactly or very very similar to to the previous graph so um allowed us to move very fast on the game and extremely low CPI on scale, thanks to realistic art style, which matches well with the male audience and uh, and um, dozer concept. Uh, another example is again uh, something that works well with the male audience, and we tried to we tried a few iterations of our style for this one. So it's uh, beat all the tests. I wouldn't say that uh, it's more than two years ago. I would say it's also around half half a year ago. But uh, the concept well familiar to everybody is around building. And the building is, uh, it could be attracting the same both male and female audience. So here, uh, if you choose, uh, if you only try to focus on one type of audience, I think male is a bit more, is a bit more skewed to male. So you would expect uh, more male to download building type of concept and the woman will be more on a decoration. But is and you can both uh, you can use both actually on uh, this game. So we, you can sell it both on the decoration aspect of the houses, like you see a bit here on the left side where there is a three button. You can even over invest in it and uh, and show more and more decoration aspect of the game, or maybe uh, bring in customers, unlocking new stuff. Usually, this is something that's uh, more attractive to to female audience. And the building itself, as on the left side where you collect bricks and you put them on the placeholder to, to complete the building. It's something that male audience would, uh, ex would you would expect from the male audience. But actually, there is a middle ground, I think, which is not, uh, which is perfect for hypercasual in a way that it attracts well both male and female. It's actually a legal concept. And legal concept is uh, what you see on the second slide. Uh, where you this you know very very familiar bricks with the six uh, six dots and the the character itself uh, uh, we could have even done, done it actually yellow exactly like a Lego Lego sequence but didn't think of it and the middle ground I say because I wouldn't say that it's more skewed towards male or female maybe you would expect a bit younger audience but not even because not nostalgia and I think many. Uh, older people are also playing this league of well, familiar fact, so nothing to be scared of. And then the third one is uh, ultra realistic art style. Here, ultra realistic, semi realistic. You would um, you would expect uh, mostly male uh, dominant game players in this game on uh, downloading the game from this creative. So you like this is type of the concepts where you can actually try multiple audiences or multiple uh, art styles to see which one impacts both your cpi and in game in game metrics as well to see which drop of the list um if we move to the next slide uh, we would see that uh first one a uh, bit higher cpi also because not only because uh it's not targeting the right audience i think it's targeting the right audience and in, in its own way but uh, just less innovative, you know, we've seen a lot of building games with the cartoonish art style and usually changing the art style itself is enough to, 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 com to, co to come up with a new game as we saw with that Colin Holland feel. And uh, um, here it's 50-50 divisions, no problem with the audience again, as a construction game could not only be targeting male, but also in some actors, female players. But I would say less, less innovation on art style, less, uh, new things that were brought by this art style to, to gameplay. So that's why the CPI is, uh, is a bit higher than 56 cents. If you look on the um, Lego, I think it's a great example because uh, same 50-50 distribution, 45-55 with the with the uh, with the female audience uh, dominant at 25-35. And these are usually the people that Kevin showed that uh, attracted a lot to match three games and uh, these are the um, 
the age bracket of female that actually ready to spend a lot of money on your in-app purchase. So well done if you manage to attract largely this audience at a low CPI. Uh, and Ligor style, as I said, it's perfect to, to do so because uh, uh, first, uh, well related to construction. Second, uh, attract all the age groups and audiences. So one of the good examples. And uh, realism, again, high fidelity realism, you see very, very male dominant, uh, fully and only based on the building aspect. And also, uh, we again, we use the car comparatively to, to a stickman that uh, we use on both previous games because it's a learning from those demolish that this type of big cars and this type of uh, um, machines that you see on the streets and you stop at men they stop to see how they're working here it's the same and same creatives you know you put a big machine and uh, related to a uh, construction gameplay and that's how you get a lower cpi at the at the, um, at the tests all right very cool indeed so we're going to go into some q a um, I'm going to go and read the questions, but I think it's really is kind of fascinating uh, with the reskin aspect of this of just how impactful you can lower the CPI just by uh, thinking exactly who the audience is that you want to target and who would be enjoying this type of game and making your. Uh, I want to reveal kindly, let's say spoiler, that it's currently one of our product strategies is to see what games worked well with only one type of audiences. And uh, again, the example of Attack Hall it's very worked very well, very marketable game, but worked only with the males. So this, we can say that you cut half of the world and that you didn't attack to a game and you see, okay, is there a way to, to redo some things and uh, get female play your game? And in that case, uh, it was done perfectly by Hall and Field. But uh, we think that there are some other hidden gems on the market, you know, if you Think of all the games launched by Voodoo, by us, and see, okay, were they targeting exclusively males? And is there a way to 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 attract also females? So I'm I'm saying just male and females in a binary division, but it could be anything else. It could be older, it could be younger audiences that you want to retarget with a new gameplay, new features, new progressions. So I think it, is it is it a good advice for for everyone who is watching to have a look at their older prototypes and just sort of put them under the microscope a little bit and say, oh, hold on a minute, that one did pretty good. It didn't quite make the numbers. Maybe we should really think about maybe doing an asset flip on on this game, or really think about what we can add and change to uh, potentially run another test. Is that is that something we'd be looking at? Technically, yeah. Technically, again, if the numbers were good in some aspects, marketability or, or insane, uh, insane uh, in-game numbers, you could totally do it. Yeah. Perfect. And there is a link and under this video if you want to uh, come and publish it with us. We'll do a test for you. Of course, I'm going to get to some of the questions. Good to see everybody in the chat. Christoph, what is up? It's a long time, sir. I'm really glad to see your name in that chat there. That's a... Uh, Hope you're doing well. So, uh, Udall has, is there a way to get more clarity on what our target target audience is, like in early case tests indicate it's different from what we had planned the game for? Um, I will take that first of all, because I have, I swear I have read, a th I've read the internet this week. Um, and essentially, yes, there's a lot of information out there. Some of it is quite old, but I think a lot of the information, if you actually type it into Google, you will start getting results and you have to pick your way through it. Um, if you are want to go next level, you can go onto something like Google AdWords and look for the tools inside Google AdWords, which will give you audiences. Same with Facebook. You can do lookalike audiences and get some data that way. Um, one of the really easy free ways is to read some of the reviews on the App Store or the Steam Store and try and figure out who is replying, who's leaving reviews, and what are they saying. Because um, they uh, data mining the review, reviews is always a pretty good idea to figure out who the audience are and what they want. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you can Google is your friend on this one. You can waste some time 
Um, but I'd, I'd recommend AdWords, Facebook, uh, sites like St- Statistica, or oh, there's a there's a bunch. Um, you can find out, but I think overall you should have a pretty good idea in your mind already who the sort of target audience is. Uh, Ole, what would you say to that one? Absolutely, and actually, for you, you should try to plan, and we do that uh, for hybrid casual a lot. Is uh, what type of players are we gonna have in the game? Largely, let's say it's uh, explorers or achievers, overachievers, and usually we firstly try to so hybrid casual different story, but still we try to put a survey at the end of the game uh, when the game finishes, when it's an early stages, to ask, okay, what do you want to to see next? You know, if it's a farming game do you want to see more enemy killers do you want to see more different uh, corps more different uh, sorry more different uh, fields and uh, usually people they answer and you understand okay it's probably people who want to explore and you know just run around find new things and every aspect of the game see new fields or whatever or it's uh, f- like people who just want to kill more enemies and achieve the higher stats be somewhere high in the leaderboard so you, and then we we actually developed the game for that and we okay if you see we we my, our game is attracts mainly explorers so we try to put every you know small little things like little let's say Eiffel Tower we have in uh, Fight for America when you reach France one of the towers is Eiffel Tower actually shooting enemies and people they liked it a lot those who are explorers they like it a lot because there's something new on the last stage of the gameplay done for them. And uh, so the same on the CPI, when you see that, okay, I'm widely or mostly want to attract male audience, you do that in the art style or show the elements of gameplay or or, uh, use other tricks to to actually be uh, attractive for them the most. Yeah, there's a lot of crossover here with our player personas and we've got some stuff coming up from that because that's a vast subject in of itself there's it ranges between five and 12 different types from explorers to socializers and it all taps into the motivations of why people want to play your game um and that does uh, and should be reflected in your cpi video it's always the same there's not one thing or another it all goes hand in hand with each other and the magic is where it all gels together and, and you do it but i like the idea of adding a survey at the end that's really smart um because i think if, if you get some people to uh uh, to respond to that, you'll learn you'll learn something, um, even if it's like no one wants to do a survey. Uh, so I definitely recommend doing that as well. Um, so I hope that helps you, Dool. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. If you see anything, Oleg, feel free to jump in. Um, Target audience. It's strange how version two continues to. Da, 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 da. That's from the site. Yeah, but somebody who asked about uh, Agent Hunt and the Cowboy game. So it's one of the examples. Yeah, it's one of the examples where we also use the risk skin of one of the game that uh, worked well a uh, uh, few months back, and we actually created a new game with the same mechanic, with a bit different progression and uh, fully different art style. And both managed to publish, and they do not seem to compete with each other so far. So I don't have actual numbers in mind, and we okay, we can't show you it as a, as a graph right now. But uh, maybe you can. I mean, can either leave under the uh, in the comments in the chat, or actually I'll show you on one of the next live streams. But uh, yeah, one of the good examples two mm, games with similar mechanics to both published. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so that's that's good. Yeah, so uh, like I said, we're not dodging anything here. Uh, but yeah, you can see uh, they're both the same type of game. Uh, obviously, very different uh, art directions in terms of theme, especially. But yeah, um, there's it's not a, it's never a zero sum game. It never has been, never will be. Um, just because one um, one is working, it doesn't necessarily like blitz the other one or butcher the other one. Um, so, uh, what kind of install volume are these CPIs? I think you answered that one, didn't you, Olek, on uh, during the slide? Uh, so that was a base of two fifty dollars uh, for. Yeah, for you, usually, right? because, um, like that's the stage at which we can compare the CPI side by side, and usually, like we don't retest it after. If you already know, have a knowledge that CPI is like twice lower in realistic style. 
we will uh, proceed with it and uh, so when the, we can't you know we don't try to scale the games on two similar on two different creatives with the high budgets that's the high perform no i mean usually we find our best creative and after we find our best creative we we scale the game with this best creative so yeah uh, i don't think anybody would have a number of, you know on the high high volumes to see uh, how they how they scale or how different you know they behave on scale. Here, yeah, it's 250, 300 bucks uh, on each of the tests for each of the creatives of games we showed you. Perfect. So you just saying it's a little uncertain to look at this because we're used to refining our eyes for more clarity, but the realistic one, which has less clarity, is the winning formula now. So. I don't, I don't think it should be unsettling for you. Um, it's true that we have uh, reached the peak of what was the hyper casual and we have to evolve with what the market, um, mimic the market, as George would say. So um, I don't think you should be, uh, you shouldn't be uh, unsettled by any of this. Um, we can see the in the last few weeks, especially as a great example, is Monopoly Go which has absolutely blown off the app stores completely. Um, and that has a very, very much a uh, 3D cartoony um, feel about it. Um, if you look at the numbers, there is a, a report that just uh, from Data AI as well, who or Game Refinery, or one of the, someone's just, I will put it uh, underneath. Um, they've just released numbers on the split of male and female split on Monopoly Go, and it's literally 50-50. And that is for a 3D cartoony type game. So again, it, get, it goes back to matching the right game type with the art style. We see all the popular match frees. Um, apart from, I don't even know if it still goes, is it Puzzles and Dragons or whatever, which was a realistic match mm-hmm. three? Um, that's the only one I can remember that it was of that ilk that had any kind of success all the other ones are i like to call it more like pixar graphics because i think everyone realizes it's like that creamy 3d um but still vibrant palette so i wouldn't be disheartened about this this is very much trying to figure out well i want to make one of these games who's the people who normally play these games and let's build the game and look make the game look like it's targeted to the right people who would play that type of game um thanks addy appreciate that if you do like this sort of stuff do hit the like button and you can subscribe so you don't miss anything um that would be super helpful the more likes i get the more chances that we can persuade olet to come back which is also pretty cool in of itself uh the old ketchup games which is by itself a huge library yeah but that they're more hyper casual type uh palettes and stuff is low poly cartoony assets always always do bad says saria so no oh yeah and uh, again uh, realistic art style so far what i saw it's indeed targeting only male audience i can't uh, come up right now i mean uh, i'm gonna tell you actually that we are trying our delicates in a realistic art style right now which is showing some good results and uh, potentially there could be our dark case coming up in a realistic art style and there you have a bit more female audience but still it's not 90 percent female audience so i don't see so far an idea how to make a realistic art style game for female audience and if you have uh, uh, please do because uh, it could be something that crosses between each other that's uh, not done yet so we can have very good results but uh, all other game genres so far still working in cartoony assets and still uh, working well in attracting female audience so we can't uh, we can't forget you know about this part of the world and uh, stop doing games in cartoony audience of course no no it's just that yeah they're getting lower cpi realistic car style right now for male audience on a games that target also by design male male audience but not more than that yeah, that's a great answer. And I think the other thing you can think like, because low poly, I'm like, I'm super passionate about low poly. I love low poly art style. Um, and I think, you again, you know, that we see plenty, uh, we see certainly a few sort of more puzzle builders built in low poly art style that are skewed probably towards more of the female 
like decorating type things that Ola was saying earlier. That can definitely work. So again, thinking about who, what are the games, what game are you building and what, what's your game like? Or what inspired you to build this? Are you building, you know, like, um, I've forgotten the name. What's that? Is it De Dead Souls? What's that really hardcore Souls game? Doesn't sound... I can't think of the name. Someone tell me in the chat. Uh, but That's... yeah, if you're... Dark Souls? I can't remember what that game's called. Anyway, if you're building like a super hardcore like game like that, you probably wouldn't want to put low poly cutesy graphics in it. So think about the, it's, it's matching it up. Um, when you say you create a campaign in Facebook, do you limit the audience in terms of age and sex? No, we don't know. But uh, Facebook is really good. And uh, it's one of the networks that knows you the best. They have all the data on you. Uh, because you created your profile, you shared pictures with your, with your mom. So they know everything about you. And they are very good in targeting. So as soon as this learning stage is, uh, is over, they... Uh, they optimize and then start start showing the game to the audience, which is alike to you. And uh, if you look at the graph, usually your CPI goes down a lot from day to day uh, over your campaign because Facebook gets get better and better in uh, targeting the people they they want to to target. Yeah. Yes, exactly right. So, for uh, assuming you mean for the testing, which I'm sure you do, which Eric just answered perfectly, uh, there's no um, there's no parameters set. They just show it to everybody. Um, let's just write question here. Dark Souls, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, if you're booking Dark Souls, you probably want to make that gloomy, dark artwork to fit the mood and the narrative and the lore of your game rather than, you know, like some sort of cute bunny flopping around. Um, if we mix multiple mechanics in the game, like basic car platformer, um would it have a positive or negative impact on cpi or can we split the ads so if you've got many mechanics how does that impact the cpi so usually depends so splitting the ads uh, it's not the best idea because people when they download the game they still want to come for what, what they download the game i remember when we uh, used to put, uh, I don't know if, no, I don't think Homa has any game published like that, but Rolik and Voodoo, they published a few runners, which at the end of the gameplay is Adlocate, uh, specifically Ronic with the, with the boil, boil game. And, uh, and many of the runners were actually having night at the end. And the Rolik, they still publish a lot of runners right now, but uh, none of them has uh, Idle Arcade in the end. And uh, that was, you know, a bit of fake positive because uh, it indeed implied on um, higher playtime and a bit uh, maybe potentially higher retention on the stone front tests for this game because, you know, the arcade is usually where explorers and people, they spend a lot of time just running around and uh, doing some stuff. But actually the churn between the stages was much higher and it was more difficult to monetize people. Because when they come for runners, and runners, they had low CPI, so usually all the games, they promoted runner gameplay, but ended up uh, with the idle arcade at the end. And uh, people were heavily dropping off because uh, it's not at all what they came from. So you have to be careful to not have something similar, you know, to attractive um, one type of audience on, uh, on your creatives, but then making the play majority of the time something, something different. So on that regards, I think it's this is dangerous. But at the same time, if your gameplays, they blend extremely well between each other and uh, that you can um, you can um, like expect that, OK, this is the same type of audience who will play both, then uh, you can try uh, you can try uh, testing uh, uh, separately both on, um, on ads. If you just mix them and you see, well, I have 10 seconds of uh, runner and 10 seconds of idle arcade, could look weird. So you have to make sure they blend super well together so it doesn't look weird or not. But uh, difficult to say whether these can have positive and negative impact on CPI. There are just genres that at this specific time have lower CPIs, which used to be runners and still a bit. But, um, but it's not dependent on whether I have like 10 seconds of... Uh, Idle arcade and 10 seconds of car platformer. Unless, I mean, if it looks good together, 
If no, yeah, it's uh, just confusing. Yeah, great answer. And I think that's, uh, I think the example there from like the Voodoo and the Rolic ones where you had that runner and you had this sort of building or odd, uh, arcade idol at the end of that, it was weird. And it, it, I think it's a really difficult thing to pull off when you're trying to mix too many stuff together like that. I mean, if you like, we've seen a lot of merge games where you're kind of, um, you're, you're merging to, like make a better vehicle and then you go and race the vehicle it has that logical progression of the game design in there and i think it's it's it, it it's integral of each other where rather than these runners that you get to the end and then now you're building building a house and it and, and the game itself doesn't actually it doesn't make any sense so um i think that answers that question it's very dangerous to do unless you can pull it off and it kind of goes hand in hand with it and that would be reflective on the cpi videos um great answer Olek. um here's a good one uh thank you addy by the way appreciate that uh what kind of art style would you recommend for a 3d tower defense game uh i would probably recommend cartoonish art style a bit what we do on uh, fight for america so far i didn't find uh and uh, we learned i'm doing a couple of prototypes that uh also is 3d tower defense and we thought about it and we did cartoonish still I think uh, there is um, maybe a room for some realistic tower defense art style, but might be a bit too difficult because of performance issues. Like it has uh, my tower defense, you have many enemies coming on you. And also on the ads, uh, it looks clearer when you have uh, red and uh, blue still for, for this type of game rather than, uh, than uh, something very realistic. I th I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't think we ever tried testing something like that, so it could be still a good test to do. But um, in the gameplay, in the game inside, I don't see how you can uh, do something very, very... Though there are mid-core games, but they are not... Um, they're not uh, there are mid-core games that are using realistic art style, but they are not promoting these games with uh, this art style as well. So I would still choose... Um, cartoonish and I would focus a lot on your gameplay for tower defense I think there is a, that's one of the genres that you can do so much in the game and you can get inspired from so many games uh mid core or even triple a games and just do a great game and then if you have a if you have a CPI within 80 cents you uh, it's acceptable and then we're gonna try to lower it on our side so keep to cartoonish I would say for, Nice. For various reasons. Yeah, I feel like a potato because I can't remember. Well, we covered a really uh, cool tower defense game on one of the streams that I don't remember when it was. It was a really nice 3D, 3D cartoony type style game. Um, and I think that works really well. And uh, just bear in mind of your performance, like Alex said, because there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of explosions. There's a lot of characters running in and stuff. Um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, when you're choosing that sort of your skills there or, or your assets to make sure that you can keep your the FPS up. Um, all right, so uh, da -da 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 what about games that have a lot of mini games? There are apps that are sort of collections. Um, what would you put in the CPI video for a game that is like 50 in one or something? And for me, uh, this is games. This type of games are over. For me, it was the the games where you you had a very very low CPI and you had to fill the game with something. You had to and you like the the gameplay that you show in the mechanics. It doesn't irritate people, or it's almost like a fake ad, like we saw from Alik too. So other publishers that are t testing or publishing this type of simulation games, you know, they had uh, something extremely fun to watch i remember there was like where you had to figure out uh, whose child is on the screen and uh, you know at the end of the pew of the ad they they uh, throw a child into the screen so very fun to watch it used to be very low cpi and then uh, you can't make a gameplay out of this uh, video so they had to just do a lot of mini games uh, one after another in order to keep to retain people and keep monetizing them and you throw very very aggressive interstitial publish uh, interstitial pressure right now you can't really do it because uh, cpi rises faster you don't have that that low like 16 8 cents cpis uh, that we used to have 
and the LTV ceiling with these games is extremely low. Like people are churning very fast. They watch ads. They want interstitial, but nothing more than that. There is no potential for hybrid. So that's why uh, the genre with um, a lot of mini games is very very difficult because you only monetize on ads. People people churn churn fast. Your only option is that you have extremely low CPI. But uh, I think you've noticed that right now CPIs are higher and they they grow higher on the scale. They grow faster on the scale as well. Got it. Nice. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a time for a mind shift. You know, it's the um, people are looking for those more deeper, meaningful experiences now. It comes in full circle. We see it in waves. We always have done. People are looking for. Uh, deeper experiences and you know less hyper casual now so bear that in mind when you're when you're thinking about this sort of stuff uh what options do you have with a simple game that uses primitives like a ball as a character more abstract games like in the old days what can can you experiment with to lower cpi well supersonic have just released uh, a game similar to that so um, I haven't seen their videos yet, but what's your thoughts on this, Ole? Uh, it's the same. I mean, usually it's a mechanic that uh, that you already have for this type of game. And then uh, you can experiment still with with all the rest that's left. With balls also, it's nice to experiment with physics, you know. In the, uh, the going, going balls is honestly all about physics and the feeling of this ball um, going on the rails, then, you know, almost falling, then slightly slightly flying and the same you know imagine going balls if you remember these creatives you it could be just a simple abstract uh, you know uh, red and some obstacles which which are like hammer stuff like that from let's say from good job games from the fun race 3d to remember the abstract r- 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 style super abstract one and here in going balls you have something a bit more almost realistic you know you have a wooden uh, wooden obstacles and you have uh, like metal bars also so you can try a lot with the with the ball game as well i mean usually you would already have your mechanic which would be the first thing uh, you, on your game so then uh, you can't really experiment with it because it's going to make a different game but still uh, everything rest uh, that you usually do like camera uh, type of physics here uh, art style you can still try with the balls games and uh, and uh, it will lower CPI for sure. What, what if the uh, what if it's like two D though? So you're limited with the camera on two D. Could you mm-hmm. like? Um, I know you said on the like the puzzle games in the past and stuff like that, where you can like create like a simple level and then like a really crazy level works quite well. It, could you do something like that if you've got like two D game? What could you do for two D? You can do the same in 2G. I imagine Survivor.io with the two enemies uh, versus yeah. uh, one million enemies that they show on ads and uh, killing them fast. Uh, I think with 2G, yeah, you can almost do the same, all the same manipulations uh, except for camera. But uh, that, that we talked about earlier and that are normal principles uh, to, to lower CPI in the colors. No, I think, yeah, you can... Uh, and 2G is a great genre, if honestly, it's a great genre. I mean, um, it's difficult to crack because the CPIs are usually higher, but I think it's so rewarding if you find a 2G game like uh, like Survivor.io because you, um, firstly, no performance, way less performance issues. And uh, secondly, usually they are also very male versus like equally split in terms of audiences. So, I mean, I always wanted to publish a 2D game, to be honest with you. Uh, didn't manage to, but if you guys have great ideas. <laughs> Bring back the 2D games, that's what I say. We had we saw all our success on 2D, mm-hmm. for sure. A lot easier to build as well. Um, all right. So, question here. If we have custom games and bonus games in our game, is it good to show them on the creatives? I, I think I said at some point earlier that uh, publishers usually or studios when they find uh, uh, gameplay from a um, from a game which is was which was built customly, they uh, to not trick people they add this gameplay as a bonus level in the game. So usually it comes in the reverse. You make a game uh, um, I, on type thrower. You made this creative where you where you. Um, 
as like which uses different mechanic where you stick enemy to the cross behind him and to, we thought of okay let's add it in the gameplay and it had the actually also insane uh, conversion into the into the rb videos because people they want to to um, uh play what they saw on us and same rush hour 3d actually they had a video where they uh they showed that there is a cop following you on the videos and then and the gameplay itself there was no police following you so one of the the bonuses levels was to race against police and usually that's how it works usually you find a good uh, video which was not fully from your gameplay and you know that's not trick people you add this as a bonus level of your game but uh, could be in reverse as well. Like you build some bonus level just on your side, and then it's like, okay, it's amazing. Let's send it to publisher so he can test it on ads. Uh, for sure, we can do the same. But usually, I mean, it's better to make it for the video. Uh, everything is easier to make for a video, and then when you make sure that it works, you can add it in your in your bonus video in your yeah. game. So. Yeah, great answer. All right, so got to make a two D game. Yeah, you have. Why not? Yeah, like Survivor Dio, right? But the same. And, uh, you know, stuff like, um, I hate it when I do that. I say something, I completely forget what I was going to say. Uh, Among Us, you know, that's a 2D landscape game that, um, you know, completely took over. Um, so anything's possible. Um, but, yeah, I think that basically um, answers all the questions, I think. And actually, we're bang on time. So got two minutes. I'll take one last question. Otherwise, you can just need to hit the like button on your way out and go and join us over on the Discord. Um, and that would help as well. Um, all right. So, Oleg, thanks for all that today. Super appreciate it. I don't think I've missed any questions, which I did last week. I missed all of them. Um think that was it so with all that said and done that's going to go and wrap it up for me and Oleg this week appreciate that like who just did that um all right so we will return someday soon if we get enough likes on the video as always is going oh there we go i knew there was another one thank you uh, is going ball still relevant for testing today well that is one of the biggest games of the last 18 months so, yes, I think you need to iterate on it. You don't want to just copy it and rip it off because I don't think that would work. But for sure, uh, that is a marble madness game that is... It, to be honest, I'm wildly surprised that that game's been so successful. Uh, not because it isn't good. It's just it. It's just a classic old game that I'm surprised is still there. What's your thoughts on that one, Oleg? No, I mean, it's it's a good game and it uses physics very well and they, they have uh, great odds. Uh... I think, uh, I mean, I don't know if what you mean going balls still relevant for testing today. I mean, maybe games with balls or it's exactly retesting the old game because if you would retest all the game, wouldn't reach many like, great results because you, uh, oh, yeah, so the game is widely successful. But if you have an idea for game for game with balls, for sure, because uh, yeah, looking at going balls, massive success very hyper casual in a way that attracts both male and female and actually i think there is even potential to hybrid casualize the concept with balls so there you go that's a super neat golden nugget just to wrap it up with for today so yeah um hope you enjoyed that uh, as always do leave us a comment underneath and if you've got any questions pop them in the comments so i can re uh, reply to those afterwards but it's friday and that means that we are going to say goodbye. Thank you for joining with us. Uh, appreciate everybody. And uh, Odek, thank you once again, sir. We will return, no doubt. But with all that said and done, that is going to go and wrap it up. All right. Thank you again. See you later, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.